Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasul Allah. I witness that there is no God but Allah, and I witness that Muhammad is his prophet. El Salamu Alaikum. Uh, my uh, present appointment as a head of an electrical department in a university in London. For the first half of my life uh, before that, I worked in industry, uh, the latter few years designing very large electrical machines. So most of my life has professionally been devoted to uh, electrical engineering primarily, also mechanical engineering, and I have spent uh, much of the rest of my time uh, studying and researching in parapsychology, psychical research. I am here in this conference because uh, uh, you, my colleague, and I decided that we would offer a paper on some unusual states of consciousness which are not uh, very much uh, the concern of normal science, but which are certainly uh, dealt with in the Quran and the Hadith. Uh, I would just like to add uh, that we, our, our findings together hmm. uh, showed in the paper which has been presented to the conference that this coincides with the Quranic ayat, uh, which I may read in Arabic, uh, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله يتوفى الأنفس حين موتها والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى إلى أجل مسمى إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. We read a paper on altered states of consciousness of the human being called out of the body experiences, lucid dreaming and near death experiences. We decided uh, to give a paper on a subject which so far has been rather neglected, uh, particularly in regard to the uh, Holy Quran and Hadith. Uh, that is our paper dealt with altered states of consciousness of human beings, uh, states of consciousness different from ordinary physical space. We considered three particular states of consciousness, the first being the out-of-body experience, in which many human beings for uh, indeed many thousands of years have had the experience of floating outside their physical body uh, in another body usually, but not always, and seeing their physical body lying on the bed. After interesting experiences, later returning to it. 
That normally takes place with no break in consciousness from getting in bed uh, to finally having the experience of returning to the body. The other kind of state of consciousness that we dealt with uh, was lucid dreaming. In lucid dreaming, one also has um, an experience of moving around uh, what looks like the physical world. Sometimes it's in a world which can be altered by the dreamer. The lucid dreamer, the word lucid, means the dreamer is well aware that they are dreaming and that their physical body is in uh, another place, perhaps back home in bed. They remember the things they did earlier and they remember the things they're going to do the following day. It has been found possible to communicate uh, with a lucid dreamer uh, through the action of their physical body. For example, uh, a lucid dreamer remembers that he discussed an experiment with the experimenters. He can flick his eyes to and fro uh, and produce electrical activity in the muscles which move his eyes and that will signal to the experimenters in their ordinary state of consciousness that the experiment is about to begin and then he can perhaps lift a weight and let a weight down to the ground again in his dream and it has been found that certain electrical activity occurs in the muscles of his arms and legs. That is the sort of experiment that can be done to study that particular state of consciousness. States of consciousness we uh, considered in our paper was the near death experience. During the last 20 years or so, it has been possible for doctors to resuscitate people, patients, subjects who are clinically dead. That is, they have no heartbeat, no breathing no electrical brain activity which can be recorded, uh, any doctor would pronounce them dead. Sometimes subjects having experience of that kind have heard themselves pronounced by a doctor or, or by other friends around or others to be dead. They have then had the experience of hearing a rushing roaring noise, rather like a, a wind, and then moving along a dark tunnel and coming out into the light. Until relatively recently, as I explained, I didn't know very much about the scientific work which is to be found in these uh, religious teachings. Uh, finding out about that uh, made me think very deeply. لو سألت أي واحد من الأديان الأخرى وقلت له هل معجزة نبيك الآن يمكن أن تشاهدها؟ يقول لك لا هذا أمر حدث في الماضي وليس لنا منه إلا الرواية لكنك لو سألت المسلم هل معجزة محمد باقية؟ قال نعم هذا هو القرآن ولذلك قال تعالى قل أي شيء أكبر شهادة قل الله شهيد بيني وبينكم وأحيى إلي هذا القرآن لأنذركم به ومن بلغ ولكن يتساءل الإنسان ويقول ما طبيعة الإعجاز في القرآن أنا إذا رأيت العصا تضرب البحر نصفين قلت هذا لا يكون إلا من عند الله إذا رأيت عيسى عليه الصلاة والسلام يحيي الموتى قلت هذا لا يكون إلا من عند الله فكيف أعلم أن هذا القرآن هو من عند الله 
القرآن يجيب قال تعالى لكن الله يشهد بما أنزل إليك أنزله بعلمه أي أنزله وفيه علمه فالقرآن كلمات ولكنها تحمل معاني تحمل علوم هذه العلوم التي في القرآن هي علوم نهائية فإذا تقدم البشر في مجال من المجالات التي ذكرها القرآن علموا أن الذي ذكره القرآن هو الحق وهذا العلم يزداد للبشر جيلا بعد جيل فهذه المعجزة تتجدد جيلا بعد جيل وزمنا بعد زمن ولذلك هذا ما نعنيه بأن معجزة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم باقية ومتجددة وبذلك كان محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم هو الرسول الذي يتحدث إلى راعي الغنم في جزيرة العرب وإلى البروفيسور إليسون الأستاذ الآن عبد الله إليسون الذي أسلم وإلى أساتذة الجامعات في عصرنا والذين شهدناهم في المؤتمر يتعاقبون لبيان هذا الإعجاز في الكتاب الكريم والسنة النبوية المطهرة. Uh, I found uh, um, recently um, that um, my beliefs, my practices of many years appear to be uh, in agreement uh, with those of Muslims. Uh, since uh, birth I have not eaten uh, pork or indeed any other kind of meat. I have always been a vegetarian and uh, I very early discovered uh, in my life that uh, alcohol was not uh, to my taste and I have never drunk alcohol. Should I add in addition I have never smoked cigarettes which are also damaging. Um, so I think um, I was rather surprised uh, uh, when uh, Sheikh Zindani uh, told me uh, after a discussion about my views and beliefs and my personal uh, practices that I was uh, indeed a Muslim. And of course I was only too happy as I have always been happy uh, to, to tell anyone who wishes that these are my views uh, and beliefs. So I have been very happy this week uh, to join uh, the Muslim family of brothers and sisters and I have been overwhelmed uh, with uh, uh, the joy uh, and the friendship and brotherliness and sisterliness uh, that have been showered upon me. I shall be ever grateful to Allah. chains, filaments, cosmic web, networks, all these words are semantically associated with the Quranic word al hubba Yes, I think uh, the scientific way is the proper way of introducing Islam to the West. Western countries, I'm thinking particularly of my own, the United Kingdom, but uh, this applies uh, also to others, uh, particularly perhaps the United States. Uh, Western countries are basically materialistic. The truth is that Allah Ta'ala in the Quran al Karim is a very important thing. He 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 is a very important thing. نحن في زمن انحطاط وأغلبية الناس بعدوا من الفطرة خصوصا في الغرب إذا لما تخاطب الناس لا يعرفوا لغة العربية ولا لا يمكن ما ممكن أن يشعروا بجمال القرآن وليس لهم إلا الخطاب المنطقي فالبرهان بالعجاز العلمي يأتي مناسب لأن يصادف أقولهم لأن هذا الشيء منطقي فعلا مثلا الآن لما أرى أن القرآن يسيف من مراحل تطوير الأجنة في الرحم وهذا ما وجدنا إلا بالمجهر الإلكتروني في سنوات الأخير أعرف أن هذا صحيح Uh, people have been educated in our schools to think that science knows all the answers and uh, anything which does not fit 
the materialistic scientific picture must be wrong. The, um, the current scientific picture, the materialistic scientific picture, in which a human being is no more uh, than a few kilograms of tissues with a little computer at the top, and the universe uh, is no more than all these objects separated around us in physical space. This scientific picture is showing cracks. It is showing cracks in um, the particle physics area, that is the micro area of the universe, uh, and it is showing wide cracks in the macro area, big things uh, in the psychical research field. A good scientist follows the evidence where it may lead. So where does the evidence lead? In the, the particle physics area, uh, electrons sometimes appear as waves, sometimes they appear as particles. Uh, it depends on the experimenter and the experiment. Sometimes particles disappear from one point in space and reappear at another point in space without crossing the space in between. Sometimes in order to make the theories, the scientific theories agree with the results of experiment, time has to run backwards. أما الذين يقولون القرآن كتاب هداية لا دخل له بالعلم ففي الحقيقة يقولون حقا وتزل قدمهم في أمر آخر نعم الكتاب القرآن كتاب هداية ومن هدايته أن يكون فيه الحجج الكافية لإقناع العلماء ولإقناع الأجيال ولإقلاع البشر على اختلاف درجاتهم ومستوياتهم لقد تكلم القرآن ووصف القرآن الكون وفاض الخبر في الكتاب الكريم وفي السنة النبوية المطهرة عن الكون وأهل عصرنا ومنهم البروفيسور إليسون درسوا هذا الكون فالتقى العلم البشري مع النص القرآني والنبوي في ميدان واحد فما هي النتيجة؟ ما هي نتيجة اللقاء؟ إن النتيجة قد وعدنا بها قبل 1400 لقد أخبرنا القرآن الكريم أن فيه من الأخبار والأنباء ما لا يعلم إلا بمرور الزمن قال تعالى لكل نبأ مستقر وسوف تعلم أي لكل نبأ من أنباء القرآن زمن زمن يستقر عنده المعنى ويتجلى فيه I feel that those signs probably weren't understood when the Quran was revealed and that's why a lot of the scholarly work then was on on the other meanings of the Quran and the interpretation of those of those meanings and these verses that we're discovering now were a mystery وقال تعالى ولا تعلمون نبأه ولا تعلمون نبأه بعد حين أي فيه أنباء الآن أنتم لا تعلمونه ولكنها ستتجلى لكم بعد حين وقال تعالى وقل الحمد لله سيريكم سيريكم آياته فتعرفونها أي أن هذه الآيات التي كانت مسموعة للأجيال السابقة أصبح الكثير منها لنا مشاهد فجمعنا نحن في عصرنا في الآيات الكونية بين السماع من النص القرآني والمشاهدة من الواقع الكوني فكانت النتيجة أن تبين لنا وللكافرين ازداد المؤمنون بيانا وإيمانا بأن القرآن هو الحق وأما الذين لا يعرفون القرآن وأما الذين لا يؤمنون بالقرآن وأما الذين لم يصل إليهم الإسلام فإن هذا طريق قوي لتبين أنها أن القرآن هو الحق وهذا الذي حدث للبروفيسور إليسون عبد الله إليسون. In um, the macroscopic area of psychical research, human beings uh, are in touch with one another. Uh, and with the universe uh, without the normal five senses coming into it. This is called telepathy. Human beings sometimes know about the future without any normal deductive process. 
And this is called precognition. Human beings uh, in full and normal state of health have interesting and unusual states of consciousness uh, in which information about the physical world can be acquired which is not normally available. All these well ascertained scientific facts show that the materialistic uh, basis of science is flawed. That the physical world is not nearly so simple as it appears. That time and space are much more complex than we think. Uh, these are showing us clues that uh, there is a great deal more to be discovered. This is breaking up materialism by that rigorous, objective, scientific method which led to materialism in the first place and leading to a more balanced material and spiritual life. How scientific uh, Islam could be. I was rather surprised, you know, uh, in Western countries we know very little about uh, Islamic religious teachings. The Quran is not very much read and the Hadith are not read. I think that um, the Muslim world uh, does not shine its light as much as some of the other religions do uh, in the West. But I was very surprised uh, to learn quite recently of the scientific statements which are to be found in Quran and Hadith. I was very surprised uh, to find uh, that there are these statements about psychical research matters uh, which Dr. Yahya uh, to hear um, other Western scientists uh, quote uh, statements in the Quran about embryology and about geology and various other uh, medical matters. The stages of embryonic and fetal development mentioned in the Quran should be used when teaching Muslim students because they are in accordance with our modern understanding of the development before birth. It will also enable Muslim doctors and nurses to explain human development to their patients using Quranic references. Some of those facts uh, not having been discovered until the years of the present century, as the Quran and Hadith uh, are some 1400 years old, that surprised me uh, very much and made me wonder uh, what the source could be. Mohammed could not have known these facts about human development in the 7th century because most of them were not discovered until the 20th century. Muslims and others are justified in concluding that these facts could only have been revealed to Muhammad by the one known who knows all about us, not only about how we developed, but how we live and function. I um, would like very much to establish uh, in London an important center in the West as an Islamic scientific research institute to study science, especially those areas of parapsychology and complementary medicine which are so weakly supported at present uh, in the modern scientific world. I have a duty to tell other scientists uh, what I discover and uh, I have discovered certain remarkable scientific things in Quran and Hadith. So I think it's my duty to tell them that they should read these books because they would find uh, their scientific uh, 
uh, imagination stimulated, they would find new experiments, uh, possibilities of scientific research uh, would arise uh, in their minds. So we uh, Muslims should shine the lights of Islam on the materialistic scientific world uh, and using those rigorous methods of science which led to that materialism uh, reintegrate uh, our brothers in that world uh, with a little uh, deeper truth about the universe in which they find themselves uh, and uh, about their own natures. Uh, Allah be praised. I uh, called myself um, Abdullah Ellison. <laughs>